Thank you, everyone. Um, basically, every time I've spoken on stage, I've pretty much spoken with a very close friend of mine, Ryan Dice. I don't, like, he was actually here for his entrepreneur. Great guy, very, very talented. And every time he does a conference, he calls me up, hey, can you come just hang out? Sure. And then I come, and the day before, he's like, hey, can you come speak about this? And because I'm on stage with him, it's just basically talking one of the best friends, and I, so I do. It's like, the last time I did, he called me up. It was a traffic conversion. It's 2,000 people. He's like, yeah, can you come talk about the mobile industry for an hour? All right, that's like asking someone, can you come talk about the internet for an hour? That's Ryan, by the way. Uh, and so today is the first time I'm actually speaking without him for a very long time, so I kind of brought him along with me, kind of like my training wheels. Um, so this part is for me, and the rest is all for you. I am, um, because actually being on stage by myself scared the crap out of me. I haven't done it in so long. And I had this rule that if something scares me, there's magic on the other side. And that's the only way to experience magic, is like when, you, when you, something just scares you from inside, but you know it, it's like a tingling scaring, you'll, you gotta go do it, you gotta jump off that cliff. That's like every time I've seen, I've had great things happen in my life, when I've, I've felt the fear and I jumped off, I mean, I've fallen off cliffs sometimes, you know, I'll be honest, and got my bruises, but I tell you, half the time you sprout wings. It is the best thing ever, so here I am sprouting new wings in front of you. So thank you for this. So actually, I've thought a lot about this talk, because this isn't about me telling about mobile industry or venture capital or crowdfunding or all that stuff that I could just talk in my sleep. Uh, this is about you know, how to be our best selves. And I was thinking, what is the one thing, and actually Noah Kagan reminded me of this, uh, another great guy who's here. Uh, what is the one thing I can share that has really made all the difference in my life? I also look back at, at, like at the arc of my life. What is the one thing that if I could just pass along, not advice, just like sharing, that has made all the difference is this, okay? And like, I'll use awesomeness and fest as an example. So we're all here, we're meeting amazing people, we're listening to amazing speakers, and I'm not a believer in inspiration. You know, I live in Silicon Valley, we all very results and metric focus. I am a believer in transformation. So we're meeting all these people, we're listening to all these great speakers, and we're learning, but I would say if you can, in these four or five days, if you can find one thing that speaks to you, just, just one thing, and pick it, something that just really feels right or tingles or whatever, however you judge it, and just make it your own. It's like you commit to it, you gotta commit. Write it on a piece of paper, you just commit that I'm right, I am, I'm gonna be this, I'm owning this, whether it's fitness, health, gratitude, entrepreneurship, loving yourself, whatever, just go all in. Take that piece of paper, write it down, put it somewhere you can see it, but that's just half of the equation, you gotta do the work. You can't just sit there and visualize it, you gotta do the work, just, just commit, burn the ships behind you, and, 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 um, and I will bet you, by the time the New Year's come, your life will be different, it'll be transformed. Every time I've done this, in any part of my life, you know, in anything in my career, it has really made all the difference. So, you know, I was actually talking with a, editor, a very well-known editor, Niels uh, Parker, he's, he's edited a bunch of New York Times bestsellers. We talk about the power of sharing your story, because it's like, it doesn't do any good to tell anyone, hey, listen, I'm at the top of the mountain, and this is really awesome being at the top of the mountain. What it is is, this is how I started, this is the path I took, these are all the roads I took and fell and did all of this, and this is how I got on top. And because then you actually show others the way, and hopefully they can avoid the pitfalls that you did. So I want to tell you a story about my friend Joanna, and I don't know if she'd be horrified that I'm telling everyone about this or not. I'll check with her afterwards. <laughs> uh, she's one of my dearest, dearest friends, this amazing, tall, beautiful, striking, blonde, full of life, big heart, incredibly smart entrepreneur. She was also a national champion rower, and she was in the FBI, and she's, she used to train the Afghani police, the Iraqi police. You know, imagine this tall blonde teaching this really male culture the police there, right? She used to take the toughest assignments, and now, and she's only like early 30s, if that. Uh, I can never tell, I think she's in her 20s, but given what she's done, she thinks she's early 30s. And now she's a CEO in Silicon Valley, building this great company, and she has people who get seven-figure offers, turn them down to go work for her for 100 grand, because they wanna be a part of what she's doing. And this is what makes Joanna, I mean, she's just amazing, right? So she and I are having dinner in San Francisco about four or five months ago it's in this Chinese restaurant, and she's sitting against the wall, and I'm facing her, and we're talking. And she tells me, out of the blue, we're talking about our lives, the things that have really formed us who we are. And she tells me that when she was 24, she had a heart attack, and she died for seven minutes. 
I was like, okay. And so, like, I leaned forward, and I got like, I got to ask, what happened? And she goes, I don't remember. She was in a coma afterwards. You know, they brought her out of it, and she was in this bubble, like, like, a, like she was like the bubble boy for like a month. And Joanna, being Joanna, was just working away in the bubble. And but she said, you know, what what changed there was after that. Everything I want in my life, like anything with this love, how she met her husband, her career, whatever she wants to do, it just happens. It comes to her. So I'm like, all right, um, you know, like I don't want to have to die to, to get that. Like, <laughs> how do you do it? And she goes, well, she leans forward and she goes, you're going to think I'm crazy, but what if this is heaven? And then she leans back. And it was like, you ever seen the movies, like the camera just spans back and things get really slow? And I was like, Oh my God, and, and I swear, there was a homeless man, you know, behind in the window. He kind of like winks at me. And then, <laughs> like, I, it was like, oh my God. Like, and I got, like for a few moments, I got it. Imagine the irony of that. She's like, she's like, yeah, what if this is heaven? Like, she's like, I died. I, how can I prove I didn't? I'm not on the other side. So because this is heaven, given what heaven is about, I can have, be, and do anything I want. And that's, she's living that. So, you know, that's an attitude that I've seen with her and a lot, like not, I'm going to separate successful people and fulfilled people because I know people who are insanely wealthy and I know people who are insanely wealthy and have, are happy and fulfilled. Those are the ones I want to be like. Those are the ones who are my mentors. And for all of them, I've noticed one pattern, including her, that whatever happens, it's never like this is happening to me. She, they all look at life as this is, life is happening for them. Whatever is happening, they, um, I mean, they fall down, they lick their wounds, they get up, but it always makes them be better. And they, they've internalized this attitude. And it, it is an attitude. None of us, like all of us who try to live this, none of us are unique in that sense. We're all humans, right? The same minds walking around with the same dramas and same, you know, fears. And, but that attitude that life happens for her, I've noticed consistently in all the best people I've ever met in my life. So, my story. Uh, I never set out to be an entrepreneur. I'm not one of those natural, you know, selling lemonade when I was four. I like Noah Kagan and Neil Patel, who are those guys are natural entrepreneurs. They're two of the best entrepreneurs I ever met. What I did, I, what was the smart, if I can say that the smartest thing I did was I moved out to a place where all the best entrepreneurs in the world went. I moved to Silicon Valley. I moved out there, I knew nothing. I just jumped off that cliff, showed up there, and just managed to join a startup. And this, I helped build that company. That company ended up going public. You know, it's actually still one of the few from that time that's still around. And so I got to ride that big wave and just learn along the way. And you know, so like in, where I live in San Francisco, you can't throw a rock without hitting someone who's running a startup as an app or who's like, you know, is looking for funding. Like my doctor, my primary care physician, left his practice last year to start a startup. It's like your waiter starting startups, everybody starting startups. So like, you, if you move there, you're gonna start a startup, and odds are you'll get funding too, because you know everyone. Th that is actually another great secret. If you wanna be fit, you know, don't surround yourself with people who wanna be fit. S surround yourself with people who are insanely fit. You will just step up. Surround yourself with entrepreneurs, you will become one. It's really, and now I'm very good at it, but I'm not good at it because it's natural to me. I'm good at it because I'm surrounded by the very best, so I can't help st but step up. Otherwise, I'll be left behind. And we all have egos, and none, none of us want to be left behind. So, so I, but this company that went public, um, after that, you know, I got kind of well known for being able to do certain things, and I went uh, consulted for like CEOs of big companies, and I started more companies that some failed, some didn't, and you know, like. So by the world standards, you know, I've had some success. And I thought I had success, but it was very, like, there's a lot of ego there, in all honesty. And my last company that I started, that was going to be my big thing. That was going to be my last one. That was going to be, like, you know, the island money or what we in the Valley call, excuse me, fuck you money. And there's, that's all ego, by the way, right? And I was... Uh, you know, but that's where I was. And I, I built it from scratch, and I decided I wasn't going to take any funding, self-funded it, you know, and to put everything into it. I was going to transform an industry, and it finally started to take off, this crazy idea I had, and it was really working. And then investors jumped in because I wanted to build it out bigger than I was running out of money. And, but it didn't matter because, like, I, I knew what the potential of that thing was. And I'll tell you something interesting. In the beginning, I used to motivate my team and everybody about how we were going to transform an industry. By the end, I was, I was motivating them by how much money we were going to make. See that difference? 
can you see that I would make different choices as a CEO? I would choose different partners. So can you guess what happened? Right? The thing blew up. I mean, it blew up. It was messy. It blew up horribly. Right? I lost everything. I was in debt. I lost my friend's money. I had family invested in it. I lost all their money. And because my ego was so attached to it, I blew up with it. I got insanely sick. Um, my relationships fell apart. I was bedridden. The doctors were throwing diagnoses at me that were very scary, like pack your bags to your mortality kind of diagnosis. And, and I, you know, I tell you, if I was depressed, that was a good day. It was, I was just, you know, I thought about suicide. You know, the works. It was, I was in a bad place. And I remember one morning I woke up and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I just, I, I'm, I'm getting out of this or I'm dying trying, but I'm done. So I staggered over, so I staggered over my journal on my desk and I, write, and I write down, I don't know where it came from, but I wrote down a vow. You know that one thing, committing to one thing? I wrote down a vow that I'm gonna love myself. I'm gonna, love, I'm gonna fully commit in every thought, every action, every feeling, every moment I'm conscious, I'm gonna love myself. And I sat back I was like, okay, where did that come from, first? And second, oh shit, I made a vow, so I gotta like figure this out, I gotta figure out how to love myself, because you know, it's not something they teach you in school or you learn in Silicon Valley. Yeah. But I, so I set about to do it, and I started like meditating, meditating and working my mind and doing things of what worked, I kept them and went deeper, what didn't work, I threw it out. And here's the thing, within a few weeks, I was fine. I got my health back, all right? Like, things started working out. I, like, I was happy, like, the de depression was a fond memory, right? And, and, but here's the thing I did not expect. My life got better, like, things I had no control over, like, people came into my life, situations came, opportunities came, I could never have reached out. It was purely because all I did was commit to loving myself, and I went all in. I was gonna love myself or die trying. And everything changed, right? So, now, it's very interesting. I, oh, before we get to that point, the book. So I used to share what I did with people and it really helped them. So a lot of them were like, hey, listen, you need to write about it. So basically to shut them up, I wrote this little book. It's like 8,000 words, really just 8,000 words. No publisher would have published it. I self-published it. I figured I would buy, there would be 10 copies sold, eight of them I would buy to give them to my friends and be done. <laughs> And really, and I, I was so shy about it, Silicon Valley, you don't talk about loving yourself, right? And the book's called Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. And within five weeks, it was the number one self-help book on Amazon. No marketing, me really hiding, not telling anyone. The book, you know how they talk about things going viral? The book went viral. Like, that book has gone on and sells more copies than a lot of New York Times bestsellers. It just continues selling and selling. And I get emails every day from people like, you know, it's changed their life, they stopped them committing suicide, like all these, all these like groups use it. That changed my life. What's different now is that, and because of that, it's insane. Like I, have, I don't, I have success now in different things, but I have a different kind of success, fulfillment. Because all I, do, I realized, what did I do with the book? All I did was I expressed my true self full on open, this is who I am, this is how I've screwed up, this is how I got out of it, and this is how anyone can replicate it. You know, all I did was, I mean, the only secret there is I put like a little piece of my heart in every word. That's it, and anyone can do that, right? And whatever they do, you can put your heart into it and be your full on self, and that's it. And so, now, you know, I'm Silicon Valley, I run a successful venture fund, I write books, my books do very well, I get, to, I get asked to come speak at events like this. You know, like, I don't need to buy an island. I'm on an island. I'm meeting great people, right? Um, <laughs> this is better. Who wants to be alone on an island? Um, and, like, you know, my only rules now, and because I get lots of opportunity, I'm very, I'm in a great place in my life, and I don't, but I only take opportunity with people I love. Only people I love. I will do anything for them, and, and you know, just... I only work with people, are, I get opportunities to put people who invest in my fund, I turn them down if I, something about them doesn't seem right, I'm sorry, I don't need your money, because money has energy, and you know, it, it, money, funny enough, when you start being your real self is the easiest thing in the world. You just stop worrying, and it just comes. I know, I know everyone says it, but I think, but I, there is a couple of keys to it. Um, the other one is that it's, whatever I do is an expression of me. Everyone has things that, that are full of expression. That I'm writing, I would do if I was stuck in a desert island. I would write in my head because I love sharing knowledge. Whatever I learn, I just want to share it. And the fund, I love helping entrepreneurs. And this is a very lucrative way of helping entrepreneurs. So, and it's just me. 
Like, it's stuff I would do whether I had money or not, and it just comes. And that's like the simple secret, right? So, so I don't necessarily believe in success anymore. You know, I'm surrounded by insanely successful people, but I also, I also know their dark sides, and I also know, like, my dark sides. So, like, what I just care about is fulfillment. And there's basically four things that matter in fulfillment, and which includes, my, you know, worldly success. First is it's got to be a pure expression of yourself, whatever that is. And, you know, people talk about finding your passion. Uh, for me, this is a definition, just what, you, what is you. And I think that actually helps people when they're trying to find their passion. Just what is an expression of you? That's it. Um, the second, this is actually easy. If it's an expression of you, you've got to give your all because you know when you're holding back. You know, we're, we're, we're best, we can be our best friends and our worst critics, and this way you can be your best friend and give your all to something that's naturally you. The third one is the one where I've actually seen a lot of talented people stop. You, whatever you create, you gotta put it out to the world. You know, I could have written that book, and I could have just, you know, just sent the word doc to my eight friends to shut them up, and that would have been it, right? But it would not have created magic in my life. I, I, I had the fears. It scared me. I mean, putting that book out scared the crap out of me. I lost a lot of sleep for me. Even my second one scared me even more. You know, but that's how I know that there's magic on the other side. The magic is when you put it out to the world. Because when you give your full self, your full on self, and you give your all, you put your heart into it, the world just, gosh, the world just gives you so much. You know, it gives you more than you ever could have expected. Like, I, you know, when the book took off, I, um, I was like, oh, okay. So someone asked me, what's the definition of success of the book? I was like, okay, 10,000 copies. It sold out within a month. It was like, I never could have planned for what it's doing. Like, um, and the fourth, this is another important one. This is what I learned when my company failed because I was attached to the outcome, right? Because a lot of great things did come out. Friendships and things that I'm doing now came from building that company that didn't work. But I was attached to one outcome, which was that company succeeding versus who I was being. You know, the, one of the key things in life is we are the effort, we're never the outcome. And if you do that, if you just focus on your effort, who you are, expressing yourself to the world and just setting it out to the world, ironically, the outcome is far better than you could have planned for. Guaranteed, I mean, really, guaranteed. So, and what's the prize? The prize is not necessarily the, the accolades or the money. I mean, those are nice, those come. But the real prize, actually, is who you become in the process. The prize for me has been the, who I've become. Like, if I do something stupid next month and lose all my money again, you know what? Five months later, I'll have, I'll have 10x the money. I'm not worried about it because I know who I've become. And that you only get by doing. I don't think you can visualize that. I don't think you can train yourself. You, that kind of confidence just comes jumping off the cliffs. And you realize, oh, I'm jumping up another cliff. I'll sprout wings again. It's really, you know, I think that metaphor of jumping off cliffs is a great one. You know, we talk about that in startup land, and, but there we say it's like jump, jumping off a cliff and building a plane on the way down. Um, I like sprouting wings better. So, which of course leads us to Tokyo. When I came back from Tokyo, an interesting happened. I checked my bank account, and like two thirds of my money was gone. I was like, what the hell? Did I get robbed? Bas well, sort of. Like, apparently, I owed ta bad ta back taxes. And my accountant, you know, he has signed checks by me, blank checks by me. He just paid them. So I was robbed by the IRS. You know, good luck getting that money back. So I remember for like a three days or so, I was walking out really stressed about money. I was like, all right, how am, gonna, how am I going to bring that back? Blah, blah, blah. There's these things I want to do. And then I read this post by uh, James Altucher. If, you're, if you haven't read his blog, read it. It'll change your life. Uh, amazing man. And it was about gratitude, and it reminded me back to Joanna's thing, life for her, this is heaven. It reminded me of, it reminded me of Tokyo. Like, all of this, the, the empty bank account, almost empty bank account, which is scary, is it, for me. And so I just walked around for days, just like feeling gratitude. So like three days later, I was in LA at a friend's event, and I checked my email, three days of feeling this way. And I checked my email, and a company I advised like maybe five years ago that I completely forgot about and wrote off that I had stock in, I had an email from them, oh, we just sold for a lot of money, and can you please sign your paperwork so we can pay you? <laughs> Three days, right? And you start to realize this is how life works. Like this is, you know, entrepreneurship, whatever. They, all entrepreneurship is an expression of you. You know, I think a lot of people get caught up in that, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur. You, I'd say be the entrepreneur that, that's a fulfilled entrepreneur, and the only way you're gonna do that is if it's expression to you. If, you know, I know people go for the money and they do well at it. 
I'm not one of them. I, I will always screw up if I go purely for the money, but if I go for what's an expression of me, I, the world is just amazing. And, you know, it goes back to that one, that one thing. If I can just leave you with that, it's just, you know, find your one thing. Pick one thing. It doesn't matter. Do it for a month, 30 days. Trust me, your life will just blow you away. I mean, it does each time I do it, and I'm lazy, you know, like, so, like, I'll do it, it'll be amazing, then I'll get lazy, and I'll fall, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, then I'll go do it again, and that's okay, that's part of life, you know, part of being human, I learn about it, then I write more books, and, you know, so, that's my talk, and I hope this has been of value to you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>